Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to be looking at functions in Python. A function is a way of writing your code into reusable chunks that you can then call later. Uh, it's very convenient if you have a chunk of code that you want to be able to reuse multiple times in multiple places and re reduces the amount that you would need to copy and paste code. For demonstrating this, I'm going to be using trinket.io slash Python 3. So we are using the uh, version 3 of Python for this demo, and we are doing it in an interactive tool called Trinket. So let's start at the beginning and say that I have some Python code that is just going to print some things out. So let's say I want to print um, a couple of lines of text. So now I have these three print statements that each are printing out a line of text. And when I run this, I will see my text printed out over here. Now let's say I do some other code and I'm just going to add a comment line here that indicates that some other code would happen here. And then later on, I want to reuse these same three lines of code. Now I could take and copy and paste these and use them anywhere else I want to use them. And with only three lines, that may not seem like too much work. But what if later on I uh, realize that I want to change one part of this? And so maybe instead of uh, Pikachu here, I want to use Bulbasaur. And now I have to make this change everywhere that I have used it. Now I've only used it twice, so this is not too big of a deal. But let's say I'm actually doing this a bunch of times. So maybe uh, throughout the, the program running, I have maybe uh, 10 or 20 different places where this is going to happen. And so in between each of these, I have other code that's happening. And so it's not just um, this code happening on repeat, but rather it is happening at specific times. And so maybe I have a bunch of different places where this is used and I realize later on, oh, I actually have to change this back to Pikachu. And so now I have to make this change everywhere again. And eventually you'll start to see that this becomes unreasonable to maintain. And this is where functions become really useful because you can make this chunk of code reusable and then if you need to make a change to it later you'll only have to make that change in one place so rather than copying and pasting this everywhere we want to use it let's turn these three lines of code into a function when we're ready to make a function in python the first thing we need to do is define the function and you can think about this like defining a word in the dictionary so we need the actual name of our function, and then we need the definition of our function, which is the explanation of what the function will do. So I'm going to call my function Pikachu. And then I am going to define it by giving it some uh, explanation of what it does. So the, the important information here, the DEF keyword, this is for define. So this says I'm defining a function. This is the name of the function. When creating a function, you do need to use open and close parentheses that creates it as a function. And then the, the colon here is the end of the line of uh, the name of the function. And then after that, when we press enter, we will see that it automatically indents this blocks our code together to show that any code that it has this much indentation is attached to this function and will run when this function is called. So what I want to do is take my print statements and move them into this function. Now, if I just leave my print statements down here with no indentation, they're actually not part of my function. In order to make them part of my function, I need to give them this indentation which blocks the code together to be part of the function. So now I have my function, I have a name, and I have the information about what happens when I run this function. If I run my program right now, it's actually not going to print anything out. A function only runs when you call it. So in order to get the function to run, I have to, at some point in my code, call this function. So I would call this function by typing the name of the function, 
and open and close parentheses. And now when the code runs through this program, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to create the definition for this, uh, for this function. And then once it has the definition for the function, it will come down here and it will call this line here, which will run the function. So now when I run this, it does print out my code. The next thing that I want to talk about is something called the main function. In other programming languages, the main function is the function that runs first, and it runs automatically when the program is launched. Python is a little bit different in that you can run a Python program without a main function. However, once you add other functions into your program, it is common Python convention that you would also add a main function and that you would have the main function be the first thing that runs. So I am going to show you how to define a main function. So you would define it just like we did with any other function. So you have the DEF keyword for define and then the name main, M-A-I-N. This says it's the main function. And now this is the function where I would have the, the initial part of my code. Um, let's say the program is running. So this is the first thing that happens. The very first thing that happens is I'm going to run my main function and it is going to print this line and then I can call my other functions. So if I have any other functions available, I can call them here. Now, uh, in other programming languages, the main function would run automatically. In Python, you do actually have to tell the main function to run. And the common Python convention for doing this is to use an if condition to check if name equals equals main. And what this does is there's a, there are a few different contexts in which a Python program could be used. And so this just ensures that you are using it in uh, the, the context where you just want to run this Python program kind of by itself. And it's going to automatically kick off the main function and run the rest of the program. There are ways you could write your Python program uh, so that perhaps it would make these functions available to something else. And so there might be something else calling these functions. Uh, but this is this if name equals equals main, and it is using two underscores at the beginning and end. This is the common Python convention to indicate that this is the way that we want this program to run. So it is going to call this main function and the main function will then run. It's important that this comes at the end because it the Python program does uh, define these functions in order. And so if you tried to put this at the beginning, the functions won't have been defined yet. So we need this to be at the end after all the functions have been defined. So now we run this and we can see here's our first line. The program is running and then it calls our Pikachu function and it runs all of this information here. So it prints out all of these lines. The last thing I want to show you about functions is having the ability to pass and return values, which is one of the things that makes functions really useful and reusable because you can have your function do a variety of different things depending on what information you pass to it. And I'm going to, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to change my function instead of my function being called Pikachu. I'm actually just going to call my function summon and then in parentheses, I'm going to pass it a value. In, inside the definition, this is called a parameter. And so I can, I can pass it whatever information I want. I am going to pass it a Pokemon. And then when I call my function, so now down here, I renamed my function summon. So the first thing I need to do is rename this to summon. And now in parentheses here, I need to pass it some piece of information. So it is asking me for a Pokemon. So here in parentheses, I could pass it the name of a Pokemon. And I would need to pass this in single quotes to make it a string because that is how we would pass, te pass text information it would be as a string. And so I could pass it the information Pikachu. And now all these places where I have Pikachu, instead of writing out Pikachu here, I can use this parameter that I'm passing. So when I pass it Pikachu, I can then re reuse that by calling this, this parameter name Pokemon. So I can put Pokemon here. 
and I could put my Pokemon for each of these other spots. And now when I run this, now it actually still says the exact same information um, because I have called Pikachu, which was the original text that I had here. So let's change this to something else. And now you can see it automatically changes and reuses that word that I have passed here everywhere that I use the Pokemon parameter in my function. So it allows me to fill that in with anything. And so now I can actually call this function multiple times with multiple different Pokemon. And now it is calling my code for each of these. And you can see it's getting a little bit uh, crowded here. So what I might want to do at the end of my function is print an empty line so that there is a little bit of space after each of these. And so now I can clearly see each individual command as it is being called. So each individual summon function, when I call the summon function, it runs all of the code. The last thing I mentioned you, you can pass a value, you can also return a value. And so here I am passing the value of a Pokemon. And perhaps instead of printing out the information here, perhaps I actually want to return uh, a string from this. And so rather than printing out all of this information, I could return a new string where I say, I summoned and then uh, we can use the plus to concatenate strings here. And so I'm concatenating the, the word that I pass here for the Pokemon with I summoned. And so it is going to return this string value. So now if I run this, no text is being printed out. That is because my function no longer prints anything. This return keyword does not include any information about printing it. It only says when I call this function, I am going to return a value. And that return comes back and gets, uh, gets stored where you, where you call the function if you store it in a variable. Uh, and right now I'm not storing it in a variable, so I am calling this summon Bulbasaur. It is coming up here, it is running this, it is creating this string, I summoned Bulbasaur. And then it's coming back here, but it's not doing anything with that information. So I need to either store this information or print it out or use it in some way. So I can make a variable and I can store this value that is being returned. Now, if I run this, it is still not printing anything out. I am storing the value, but I'm never using the value. So now I can print out that value. And now it is printing out this line of text, which is using this print statement here. So this line is calling my function. It is passing it a value. It is passing it this value Bulbasaur. It is creating a string, I summoned Bulbasaur, and it is returning that to the spot where I called the function. And then, it, then the next line down is it is printing the value that was stored. Now, alternatively, rather than storing the value, you can also just print uh, with a function that is returning a value. So I can print my function call. So now this function call is uh, going to still call this function, it's going to pass a value, it's going to create a string, it's going to return the string back down here, and it is inside of a print statement. So when that string gets returned, it will print it out. And let's do that for each of these other ones as well. And so now we can see each of those lines is being printed out. So hopefully this uh, helps make clear how you can make code reusable using functions, how you can call functions multiple times in different places, how you can uh, define a function, giving it a name, and how you can pass it a value and return a value.